Welcome back. I'm Robert Sawyer. And I'm Mrs. Sawyer. You're watching another episode of Only Black, Black Kids, Kids in, in the, the Class. Class. And this is our Valentine episode. You excited? Sure. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised to hear you say that because we never celebrate Valentine's Day. Exactly. I mean, I say never. Rarely. Rarely, if ever. I can think of only one time we celebrated Valentine's Day. Well, I'm not the romantic, so I don't even remember that time. I'm definitely the romantic you in are. the relationship. You are. You are. I'm definitely the romance. <laughs> you are. You are. I'll give you that. The Rico Suave. <laughs> I don't know about Rico Suave. The but Don Juan You're de definitely amor. the romantic one in the relationship. I brings the romance. Yes, you do. Because I follow one simple rule. One simple rule. Ladies, gents, my NBs, there's one rule. If you want to keep the spice in your relationship, as the great but never won Grammy of the Year award <laughs> artist Beyonce told me, if you keep it how it is, you never, never got to worry about how it used to be. <laughs> and I follow that rule. I am always winning the heart of my loved one. This is true. I'll give you that. It's all, all facts. All facts. <laughs> all no facts. printer. So... Anything planned for our Valentine episode? No, I don't have anything planned. You took care of that. Okay. You're the romantic one, by the way. Do you remember a few episodes ago I said I'm going to find one positive story? You did. I do, gonna, I do recall that. 99% toxic, 1%. Hey. Yeah. That is almost impossible. <laughs> it is almost impossible. I believe that. Oh, my goodness. So today I said, you know what? I got to do it. There's a lot of pressure. I was looking for these happy stories. They just don't have the same. It's like love songs. You know how love songs. I mean, there are happy ones. Yeah, well, that's so great. But the sad ones. Yeah. The traumatic ones. Those are the ones that, that, that yeah. pull on the heartstrings. Yeah. Those are the ones that people love. Some, well, that's how it is with stories. I agree. Some of my favorite love songs. If you actually listen to the lyrics, they're not that great. You were listening to one the other day and like it's my favorite. I think it's my favorite duet outside of like Mary J and Method Man. Um, it's uh, Deborah Cox and RL. From Next. Yes. That we can't be friends because I'm still in love with you. Yeah. And it's like they broke up. <laughs> the song is about them breaking up. Yeah. <laughs> but I love that song. <laughs> what made it particularly odd is you were playing a bunch of songs like we were dancing and oh, we love these songs. And then you put that on and I was like. Uh, is, is there, there something you should know about? Is, there something, <laughs> is this how you gonna? This how you gonna do? Oh, oh, this is what you gonna do? Fine, fine. We no. don't gotta be friends. <laughs> it's like, uh, okay. Yeah, no, that was just that's. I I, I love love songs. Did you not that. realize that that was a a breakup song? Yeah, but I still like it so much. Yeah, I mean, my favorite songs are. The, you know what? Just totally random. You know, I saw a thing. You know, Brandy and Monica, the boy is mine. Yeah. You know the rumor how they don't like each other and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. I've seen interviews with like, no, that was just the media doing all that. They did not like each other. Oh, I believe that. So what had happened was they did the song. They didn't really know each other. Brandy was just being Brandy Miss Perfect. And Monica said, oh, she too proper. I'm from the hood. <laughs> ATL, ho. They didn't really know each other. They weren't really trying to know each other. They recorded the song separately. They did the video. Barely interacted. Makai Pfeiffer was holding it down. Shout out Makai Pfeiffer. Mm. And then they, you know, the song's out. People are digging it. And you know what Brandy did? What? She performs the song live without Monica. Ooh. You see, I'm not, I mean, I know you like Brandy, but I'm a Monica. I love me some Monica. I don't, I don't put them, I, it's not like two legends cannot coexist. I don't I put them you. against each other. But I just didn't really listen to Brandy like that. Monica. But then. You should have known. So she performed it, she performed it on like Jay Leno or some show, one of them things. Then what had happened was Monica said, oh, oh, I got something for you. So now it's the MTV VMAs. They're about to perform. And right before they walk on stage, Monica said, Sup, saw you perform that song. Bop! No. Yes. That's not true. Yeah. That's true? I saw it on TikTok, so you oh. know it's gotta be true. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's TikTok facts. 
<laughs> then he said, "Look at look at those look at those fake smiles. Look at that. He's like he's breaking down the performance. Wow. How he knows all this? Uh, who is he? No way. Yeah. Who is but, that? But 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 they also cut the footage of Dallas Austin, one of the producers of The Boy Is Mine, and he confirmed that that happened because he was there at the performance. Oh, he said okay. it happened, okay. and he produced the song, so he yeah. he knows more than me. So they're on stage, <laughs> and if you watch, like Brandy does a smile, like I got your bitch on that. Okay, then when they're walking off, they look like they're gonna hug. But if you watch, and the guy zoomed in, they're actually like, and the two guys, there's two guys that pull them no apart. No way. Yes. Oh. Yes. So they did not have love in the air for the boy is mine. <laughs> That's a lot of drama. That's why we're talking about it. <laughs> That's a lot of drama. I don't know what this show is yet. I thought we were just going to, I thought we were giving advice. I thought we were responding to readers and listeners and watchers and all that kind of stuff. But more and more, it seems like we just talk about tea. Oh, maybe. I like stories. Oh, man. I saw this one story this week that we'll do like in a month or something. Okay. It is not what we usually do. It's not like relationships. It's not even like best friend haters. It's just a good story. And I was like, well, man, I love stories. So we're going to have to read this one. It is long. We might do the entire episode on that one story. Okay. And it's crazy i'm open to it i hope it's a good story i mean you said it's crazy so i trust you so it's true crime Ooh, you know i like a true crime. why do women love true crime i like it why crime. do women oh, you want to murder me like what is, why, <laughs> why do you watch all this shit no whatever now No one would ever know. I didn't see how to make a murderer and all that shit. So I, I, don't watch, I watch happy shit. I don't watch all this how to kill a motherfucker in his sleep. Like I saw you reading something the other day. If you do a podcast with your husband and you murder him, how is the best? Like, no. What do you? No. 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 But that's neither here nor there. That's, that's in the future. That's what we're going to get to. So there's some R&B drama. There's some murder drama we'll Uh-oh. get to. But today... It's all relationship drama. Okay. I try not to do it every episode, but today's episode... You got the drama. All relationship drama. I'm for it. Shall we start with our first story? Let's go. Let's get going. I'm upset my boyfriend didn't ask if I wanted anything when he got takeout for dinner. Am I wrong? Yes. The boyfriend's wrong. She's not the boyfriend. Well, not her. I am shocked to hear you say this. Is a, this is food related. I thought I, I knew how you would go. Oh. I'm upset my boyfriend didn't ask if I wanted anything when he got takeout for dinner. Am I wrong? There's more context to my frustration than I can add if people need more info. But here's the gist. My boyfriend and I are both mid-30s and live together. We both work full-time, and I work a second part-time job in December, retail. Might not matter, but we live close enough to his work that he walks, whereas I have to drive 45-plus minutes each way for my full-time job. My part-time job is close, and I bike there. Some days I work from home, but I haven't been able to work from home any days this week. Anyway, I worked eight hours at my job yesterday, followed by a three-hour evening shift at my retail gig. Damn. My boyfriend and I both got home around five, chatted while I was getting ready for my next shift, then left around six. This shift is awkward for dinner, and I didn't eat before I left. So around 8.30 at the end of my shift... I was starting to feel extremely hungry. I texted my boyfriend and asked if he could start making rice and to preheat the oven. He texted me back saying, I'm on my way to pick up a pizza I ordered for myself. Does that change anything? What? Oh, no. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. First, he got a pizza with toppings he knows I don't like. But more importantly to me, he didn't ask if I wanted anything. (sighs) Oh, no. Oh, no. He knew my shift was ending soon and didn't see me eat dinner before I left. Why the hell didn't he ask if I wanted anything? So I responded, I wish you would have asked me if I wanted anything from Pizza Place. He got very defensive, said it's okay if he wants to do things by himself sometimes. Oh. And that he was just taking care of himself. Oh. And there's nothing wrong with that. From my perspective, I feel hurt and like he doesn't care about me. He knew I had a very you long know. day. And it would have taken no extra effort for him to text and say, hey, I'm getting takeout. Do you want anything? The only effort would be thinking of me, which he didn't do. And that is why I'm upset. 
When I got home, he was angry at me and said, I don't appreciate you making me feel oh. bad about doing something oh. that isn't wrong. Oh, wow. He never apologized and maintains I'm in the wrong for making him feel bad about this. Oh, so who boy. is wrong? Are we both wrong? Help. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's that's a travesty. That's a travesty. Mm. He's too old for that. He should have known better. Mm. He should have mm. known mm. better. You say he's too old for that. I wouldn't have done that when I was a teenager. I was trying to give him benefit of the doubt. I wouldn't have done that. There's no age where I would have done that. But you're just a caring person. This is clearly not. He was same. doing things for himself. Which is okay. I can get that. But when she already said to take out the rice, that, that, that's like, that's opportunity to correct not thinking about her in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> and they never mentioned if she took out the rice. <laughs> yeah. Like, Come on. He probably didn't. He probably didn't because he was mad at her. I mean, he asked, does that change anything? I'm already eating. <laughs> He's like, oh, don't worry. Don't worry. I don't need any rice. Don't worry. He said he, was going, he said he was going to pick up a pizza, so he hadn't even gotten it yet. So he still opportunity to get her something. If he gave a damn. Yeah. I, I don't see how he that. Does not. I don't. I don't see how that relationship keeps going. No. They're not the asshole, and he's in a wrong. I'm There's sorry. There's one comment I kept. Okay. What's the comment? I'm married 30 years. I don't think I've ever just ordered for myself. I ask her on the way home every day, does she need anything from the store? She does the same. It's common courtesy. I see his point, but I think it's kind of selfish if he knew after you told him you were on the way home. Yep. He still hasn't gotten his yet and still could have grabbed you a pizza. Yep. Maybe he just craved that pizza and it didn't cross his mind. Sorry. It will all work out. I don't know if it'll work out. That's me as telltale signs of who he is. That's a red flag for you. Yep. For me, that's a no-go. Okay. And then get mad at me? Oh, no. Oh, He was no. focusing on his self-care. Oh, no. Okay. Then I'm going to be focusing on myself. He listens to Robert Sawyer CO on Instagram and TikTok, <laughs> who said he has to focus on him first before he can take care of everyone else. Okay. But what he didn't listen to was like everything else in those at Robert Sawyer CO videos that said, and then be loving and generous yes. in, in your relationships. Yes. And thoughtful. That was I was missing. I, I just, no, I would be very upset. I have one rule that I recommend everyone follow. All of my clients. As you know, I'm a therapist. Mm -hmm. But not. Not not your therapist. Correct. Okay. I'm a licensed mental health counselor, though <laughs> this is just for shits and gigs. Shout out shits and gigs. This is just for <laughs>, laughs on this podcast. Yes. Nothing I say is mental health advice for you. <laughs> so what's your one thing you tell my one thing my number one rule don't be a dick okay you thought it was gonna be more complicated didn't you you thought no. it was gonna be like levels nope no. don't be a dick in any scenario don't be a dick and this guy said fuck that rule i'm yeah. gonna be a dick he was he, he was dickish <laughs> he's not even an asshole he's not even the asshole yeah. he's the dick yeah pause that would that would never i mean I was like, I don't think there's ever a time where you've gone and got something or even thought about going to get something. Well, I'm the romantic man. You are. And then like me, for sure, I'm always getting you stuff. I would have just gotten you something anyhow. Or you just told me if you didn't want it or you wanted it. <laughs> or I would have attempted to call you to see if you wanted it. No comment. Yeah. No comment. Why is there no comment? You think of something if I you're made, thinking. If I made a comment, then it wouldn't be no comment. Oh, so no comment. Okay. But since you asked. Go ahead. Get to it. You will always think about me to bring me food or to see if I've eaten. You always do. And I love you. Oh. And I appreciate you. Oh, I love you too, babe. However. I was waiting on it. There are many times, including this week just passed, where we eat dinner at the same time. We eat dinner together. And then, whoops. Just didn't mention that you weren't going to be home for dinner. I was going to be home for dinner? No. Not on time. I tell you when I'm going to be late. I let you know before the time. No, don't, don't, don't cap for the camera. Don't cap for the camera. I tell you when I'm going to be late. I do. Okay. See? Now you can start and stuff. Oh, now you start and stuff. Yep. Now hmm. you're starting stuff. Hmm. Okay, I thought it was supposed to be the Valentine's Day thing. It's still the Valentine's Day. You want episode. the heat. Okay. 
for our next story. Am I the asshole for walking out of a restaurant date after finding my date had been lying to me? I'll set the scene with a few relevant facts and fake names. I, 36 female, met Travis, 34 male, on a dating app about a month ago. We spoke and FaceTime regularly and already had a coffee and quick lunch date. Our office buildings are near each other. Travis planned the date and chose a mid-scale steakhouse. Not a chain, but not black tie. I had been clear early on that my purpose to going on dates is an exclusive monogamous relationship. After we ordered, he brings up the topic of relationships and starts saying things like seeing where it takes us, casual, and keeping an open mind to new experiences. This was all news to me and not in line with our previous conversations at all. Mm. I tried to clarify if these were recent feelings. It's absolutely his right to still want a relationship, but not with me. I would be hurt and I respected his feelings. He sort of made a weird, nervous chuckle and said he's felt that way basically the whole time. Oh. He started to say something, but I excused myself to the restroom. Here's where I may be the asshole. I found our waiter, handed him my card, asked to ring out our table, and box my meal to go. I gave it a few minutes in the bathroom and returned to the table. Travis was starting to ramble, but I cut him off. I said there was nothing wrong with his preference, but he lied to me to keep me on the hook. I didn't appreciate being manipulated or having my time wasted. I am not interested in hookups, casuals, friends with benefits, etc. And I was clear from the beginning. I didn't raise my voice, but I was firm and clearly angry. Then our waiter walked over with his plate and my doggy bag. I told Travis dinner was taken care of and walked out. Oh. In the time it took to walk to my car, he was blowing up my phone about embarrassing him by storming out. It was childish to leave him there at that type of restaurant and to not hear his explanation. I blocked him. So not sure if he continued. My friends are split. Some say it was an asshole move to leave like that. So, strangers, am I the asshole? Nope. 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 Not at all. Oh, I love it. That was some gangster shit. That's the, I love it. That's how you get things done. No, 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 done. no, no. Don't worry. No, no, no. Dinner's taken care of. Yeah, it's done. I'm, I'm out. I'm leaving. I'm out. Enjoy. Enjoy your meal. She paid for him, too. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. See, she don't got time for this. She, no. She's not with nope. it. Nope. She's not trying to kindle, make sure he feel good, hear his side. No, Understand? No. no. It's not, she's you not, know what she was she's doing? Not about, she's not that part of You know of what life. she was doing? What? She was standing on business. Yeah. No, no, no. She's not, that, she's not at that point in her life anymore. She's not going to waste my time. Are you already wasted time. <laughs> you know, this old mid-ass restaurant talking about embarrassing you at not a restaurant. See, he wasn't even on her level to get with. Mm. Yeah. That's what you get for dating a younger man. Oh, well, I don't know. If he was younger, I don't remember that part. She's 36 and he's 34. Oh. You ever dated a younger man? Yeah. Mm. I married one too. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Putting it out there. <laughs> it's a significant age difference. <laughs> so. Yeah. You know, I like to get the engagement. I try to have a quiz a week. I've been trying to take it cool on the quizzes, but this okay. week, this week, I said, we've got followers now. We're growing on IG, nowhere else but on <laughs> IG. So I posed a question. To our loyal fan base and followers, our classmates. And the question was, do you remember the song? And I will do anything oh, for Oh, meatloaf. Love. Yes, 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 yes. But I won't do that. Yes. I never knew what that was. Maybe I was too young. <laughs> I should have listened to it. I, I said I was going to listen to it before this episode, but I, I didn't remember. But like, do you know what that was? He would no. do anything for love, but he won't do that. What was the that? I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. I think it's all about interpreting. Like, what do you? you think? I don't remember that song. I was like twelve or thirteen. Hey, or something. You were in middle school. I don't remember that song. Yeah. I just remember that one part. Okay. So I posed the question to the classmates. And I said, "Finish this sentence. I would do anything for love, but I won't." Dot dot dot. Yeah. And we got some answers. I like to get now, knowing our our followers, we definitely got some ratchet ones. <laughs> and uh, what, you know what? You, you, get it? you know what, guys? I said not on Valentine's Day and not on Black History Month. We're not going that way. So I curated to the these are the vanilla ones. Oh, okay. Maybe another day we'll do the uh, <laughs> some of them other ones. Some spicy ones. They had some spicy uh, ones. Well, we do have a. We do have a segment called 
Toxic Confessions. Oh, okay. Which okay. I, I want to give myself a shout out that every time I've ever done it, I've always used the same voice. <laughs> What's the segment called? Toxic Confessions. <laughs> so here are, here are the vanilla. I would do anything for love, but I won't share my candy. Wow. I would do anything for love, but I won't make a decision about where we're going to eat. That made me think oh. of you. That huh? made me think of you so much. <laughs> I would do anything for love, but I won't wear matching outfits. Man. No. I was so, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> I would do anything for love, but I won't attempt another lap dance. I have learned my lesson. Oh, wow. Whoa. Wow. That's a whoa. little spicy. <laughs> these, these are the vanilla ones. <laughs> so, whoa. That's a little spicy. Okay. I would do anything for love, but I won't give your mom my Netflix password. Oh. There's some history there. There's some There's context. There's a lot of history There's there. There's some context. <laughs> I, not, won't give not, I won't give you. I won't give, give your, your mom mama. the password. Like, okay. wow. There's something going on there. <laughs> I would do anything for love, but I won't wake up early on Saturday. Ooh. And then it was like, is my wife filling out all of these? Like, I don't know <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> I would do anything for, for love, but I won't go camping or glamping or whatever that shit is. Again. I kind of agree. That's again, all. I was like, yo. Like, like, did you make all these fake accounts? I, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> I promise, but I wouldn't do that. So you're not going glamping with me? No. You know what glamping is? Yes. Okay. I would do anything for love, but I won't let you see me in my wig cap. Okay, that one was mine. Wig cap. Wig cap? Oh, okay. I would do anything for love, except let her win in Uno. That's terrible. I used to always let you win. You didn't let me win. I whoop Fam. your ass. I used to whoop Fam. you. I used to be trying to lose so oh much. Oh my gosh. Here we go. Here we go. You you know you make it up. Don't I tell you. Let me tell you that's how gonna, bad gonna, you are That's going to be a new segment. Let me Cap tell you. Cap for the cam. Let that's me tell new. you. Cap for the cam. <laughs> let that is me so explain not true. to you how bad you are at these games. Okay. You are so bad at most of these games that I can't let you win half the time. You're so full of crap. That happened so many times. You got better. That's 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 all games. When we got together, that's all games. All game. I mean, I don't play no games. So first off, that's all games. Don't try to catch me in some bullshit. That's all games, right? Not all games. Uno and Tonk. I mollywop you consistently in Tonk. No. no. Have you ever beaten? Me? I let you-, you win in Tonk. God damn. Yeah. I let you win in Tong. With the goddamn lies. <laughs> you know? Because if, if you were you were good in Tong, you, you could <sighs> might be able to hold your own in this other game. Say what you want to say. Say the shit you want to you know, say. Like spades. Hey, y'all. I'm not good at like spades. spades. Like I'm spades. I'm not good at spades. Yep. I learned a lot of games nope. from my mom, who was not American. And no. she didn't grow up where I don't know. I don't I know if they play spades. Play, I didn't learn how to play spades from my mom or my father. I don't know if, she, if they play spades in Jamaica. I, I didn't learn how to I play know. spades from them. I can't use that she's not American as an excuse. No, you can't. My parents did not play spades. Yeah, but you don't, I, I didn't learn to play spades. spades from my parents. Where'd you learn to play spades? School. See, I, I went to school for education. I did too. <laughs> okay, explains a lot about you. Didn't you didn't do any extra. Extracurricular activities. Oh, I know your extracurricular activities. <laughs> okay. So no. Plain space. I didn't do yours. <laughs> no. Jeez. My goodness. I haven't played the dominoes indecent. with you yet. So you don't even know how to play dominoes. Robert. The spades was enough. Let me tell you something. I can't embarrass you Let more me tell than you that. Something. Let me you tell don't you something. know how to play spades. It's a gang of old Terrible. Cubans and old Jamaicans taught me how to play dominoes. So you oh, don't want, we don't my. call it dominoes, okay? That's what you Yankees call it. We don't call it dominoes. What you call it? Don't worry about it. Exactly. You ain't calling anything because you, you know, I probably can't play like you play spades. But you know what's, what's funny? Ladies, gents, and my NBs. We had a spades night not too long ago. I invited my friend over. I, I invited my favorite person in the world. This one. And I invited my second favorite person in the world. My mother-in-law. And I teamed up with my mother-in-law, and we ran them books the whole goddamn game. We were destroying these people in this game. And then, on the most technicalities of technicalities, we lost. There was no technicality. Y'all lost. 
and you had the help of my mom, who's the bomb spades player, and you still lost. You know what? Because I'm a good team you player, still lost. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take this to a different place. But you were there. And when you phrase it, but you had the help of my mom, it makes it sound like I was the one that lost. And I was lost. I was not. So. You lost. But you know what? That's what you do. You throw people under the bus. That's cool. No, that's why you didn't have a rematch. I would do anything for love, but I won't sleep without my bonnet. I would do anything for love, but I won't stop singing in the car. Oh. I wouldn't do that. I either. told you these were the vanilla ones. <laughs> I wouldn't do that either. Sing one the day, car is the one best. day, if enough people write me, <laughs> if enough people DM me or email me, I will, I will put out the spicy the ones. Spicy ones. <laughs> so okay. some of these, I was like, come on, this, <laughs> this is a family show. Like we can't, I can't be reading all this shit. It's the Valentine. It was not a lot of love. It was a lot of toxic confessions. So you know what? Email us at ask the black kids. At gmail.com. We'll see if we we let some of these out. Got a few more stories for you. Okay. If you're in the mood. I'm in the mood. This says a lot about you. We're going to go with the dramatic one. Am I the asshole for bailing on anniversary plans with my boyfriend last minute for a friend's emergency? My boyfriend, 21 male, and I, 20 female, had fancy dinner plans and tickets to the movies to celebrate our one-year anniversary. We were both super excited about it and had planned it a while ago. However, about an hour before our reservation, I got a message from my close friend. He texted me saying he was having a family emergency and he really needed some support, someone to talk to right now, and asked me to come over. I've been friends with this person for years and I've always been there to support him and cheer him up as he has some family home issues. So I called my boyfriend who was driving back from work to tell him we'd have to cancel because I had to go be there for a friend. And he got mad, even though I told him it's out of my hands. I then hung up because I didn't want him to carry on driving and being on a call, especially if he's angry and said, I'll speak to him later. Cut to me coming home a few hours later, and he was pissed. We then got into an argument, and he said that I prioritized another guy over him and that my friend is a grown man who could have waited until the next morning to have me come over. He also got more mad when I couldn't tell him what the emergency was that ruined what was meant to be a special day, even though that's my friend's personal information and it's not my business to share. Oh. I felt that was very insensitive of him to not understand why I had to go there and be there for a good friend of mine. And yeah, we lost a bit of money for the tickets, but we can just reschedule. But I can see why he's frustrated as it's our first anniversary and he had planned it a while ago. Plus, I got angry at him for being insensitive, which only heated the argument and made it worse. It's been a few days since the fight, and he's still being frosty to me, waiting for me to apologize. And now I'm thinking about it. I'm not sure if I handled it right. Am I the asshole? Yes. She had to go be there for her man friend. No. Mm -mm. Hmm. No. A lot of comments on this one. You got some for? And there's an update. Okay. Okay. Comments first. Was this something that could have waited another day? The original poster says, no, my friend had a big argument with his dad. And without going into lots of details, my friend struggles with alcohol problems. So I went over to help smooth things over and give him someone to talk to and distract him as he was very upset. When my friend asked for emergency support, I don't ask questions. I go. How could I have enjoyed my night knowing he was struggling anyway? Next comment. Girl, let me tell you this right now. (laughs) That boy is using you. If he has an actual emergency, like needs a ride to the hospital or his parents both just died or he's so depressed he's standing on a ledge and needs a friend to talk him down, that's one thing. But he has a fight and it might cause him to drink? Fuck that. That's not an emergency. (laughs) 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 <laughs> yeah, but like, is, is if he, he's like an alcoholic or something, doesn't he have like a sponsor or something for that? Uh, yeah, I mean, he should. Yeah, that's what I would. I mean, what kind of friend wouldn't make sure he had a sponsor? That comment keeps going, but I'm a. It, it's very long, and she's like, I was with an alcoholic, and he's always gonna make it your problem. He wanted to drink, also his problem. You cannot and shouldn't. It keeps going. Uh, basically 
it's looking like she might be the asshole. Yeah, I think she's the asshole. I, I, I'm sorry. The fact that she came back home in a couple of hours means to me it could have waited. Or why couldn't she just talk to him while she was getting ready? Because the internet does this. Not me. But uh-huh. Because the internet does this. I would like to point out that that last comment was a female, as is this next comment, also a female. Okay. Can you see how this must look to your boyfriend? You ditched him on your one-year anniversary to go to the emotional rescue of another man. That doesn't look good. I'm sure it felt awful. Then you accuse him of not being sensitive and understanding when you are doing the same thing to him. You are the asshole. Yep. Then another person wrote, I told him it's out of my hands. It was entirely in your hands. Then I hung up. Nice. I couldn't tell him what the emergency was. Wow. Really doubling down on the nonsense, eh? You're lucky he hasn't dumped you yet. You're the asshole every step of the way. Yeah. And now for the update. Okay. Six days later. After reading everyone's comments, I realized I was in the wrong and I didn't prioritize correctly. I came off pretty defensive at first, but after thinking about what people said, I should have been. I shouldn't have been. I apologized to my boyfriend and told him nothing like this would ever happen again. He's still pretty mad, but after a serious conversation about sending boundaries between me and this friend, he's willing to move past it. He did say if it happens again or I cross any boundaries with this friend, then he's gone. So it obviously did affect him more than I thought. I'm willing to respect this and try to consider my boyfriend's feelings more while still being there for my friend. We have rebooked our tickets and dinner for next weekend, and hopefully it can still be special. What I will say is the emergency message I got from my friend at the time didn't have much detail, so I didn't know how serious it was. Obviously, when I got to his place, he was very upset, but it wasn't life and death, and in hindsight, it could have waited until the next morning. I'm not trying to make any excuses. I just thought some comments were a little harsh. I care for my boyfriend very much, and I'm happy we've got this resolved. The comments about my friend's alcoholism made me realize I needed to give him the resources to help himself, which I will do if he's open to it. I've never had someone I care about deal with alcohol issues and was a bit naive to think I could help him without professionals. I spoke to my friend on the phone this morning, and even though he was very defensive, he agreed to meet with me to talk about the next steps for him getting help. His dad is threatening to kick him out of the house, so I think that was a bit of a wake-up call for him. Also, I don't believe my friend had any malicious intent. When he asked for my help and won't be cutting him off, like some of you suggested, I think healthy boundaries to prevent any misunderstandings will do. That's the update for some of you who are asking for one. Oh, okay. She kind of learned from it. She took some advice. There are more comments. She grew. She grew. LOL. I love how you still refer to it as an emergency when it is, was evidently was not an emergency. <laughs> Next comment. More like some guy wanted her attention. An original poster just ditched her boyfriend for him. Yeah. Next comment. I gave her boyfriend a week before he dips. If she would take some accountability, maybe there'd be a chance, but no way the boyfriend continues to tolerate this disrespect. I know I've broken up for less. Hmm. Original poster jumps in. How am I disrespecting my boyfriend? I apologized and took accountability that I was in the wrong. I agreed when my boyfriend asked to put boundaries between my friend. I've done everything he's asked, so where's the disrespect? Yeah, I agree. I hope they can work it out. I hope so too. You see, I think there was there's there's this one I say I, I, I hope they work it out. I hope they can work it out. Yeah, I do. Any advice? Um, she still went to go see him again. Uh, to been, get him the help with boundaries. Yeah, I think she just need to work on boundaries with the friend a little bit, and um, continue to you know she had a very she's very optimistic and positive and just stay positive on it and make sure she has time there for. Like where the relationship is supposed to go with her boyfriend, right? Seems like she says she care about him. Which brings us to not so toxic confessions. Oh yeah. I wonder what you do. Just for our Valentine's episode, oh, okay. I have That's new. I had just for today. Okay. Don't worry. Ladies, gents, and my NBs. Next week we'll be right back with those toxic confessions. <laughs> but this week we have not so toxic confessions. Okay. Hooked up with my first thick chubby girl. Ten out of ten. She was mad flexible, and every spot on her body was soft. Then she cooked afterwards. <laughs> A few comments. Can she be your Valentine's? <laughs> Next comment. Their flexibility will always surprise you. <laughs> and the most important comment. What? Welcome to the thick side. <laughs> Oh, boy. 
White girl told me she's never been with a black guy before. Turns out her Christmas photos with her ex say otherwise. Lesson learned. Ooh. And in Black History Month. Mm. No. What does it mean when your girl says she needs to heal? Is it code for I've had enough of your shit? I think so. I think, probably. I think, I think, I think, probably. I think, I think the accurate. way you ask, the way you ask <laughs> makes it seem like it might be. I think that's accurate. Started flirting with this cutie in class. Felt suave until I accidentally let out a fart. Hope it wasn't as loud as my confidence. Some things don't have to be confessed. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if you could have. Uh... Why you had to talk about that one? But you know what? If if we were being honest, I can't say some things don't have to be confessed because then we wouldn't have a podcast. This is true. Our entire podcast is based on things that you probably could just kept probably to shouldn't have shared. Yeah. Me dreaming about my coworker every night, even though I told her I'll never date her. Mm. That was stupid. Yeah. You sound dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Extra. Went on a date with an amazing and gorgeous woman who was clearly out of my league. Mm. Sadly, the date didn't go so well as she didn't feel a spark. Driving her home, I spotted a fox attacking a cat. Pulled over and saved the cat. That ignited the spark. Married with two kids now. <laughs> I'm playing player. <laughs> I don't know. That's not like a I'm not a fox and a cat fighting. What the? F- <laughs> I'm leaving. What? Why would I get involved in this? He had to show his skills. I got the girl. He got some skills. And rabies. Okay. <laughs> and this one I saw and I had to do it just for you. Okay. How do I propose to my girlfriend? We are both in the marching band and I want to be with her forever. Oh. Oh, that's cute. You ever known two kids in marching band in love? Yeah. Oh. Who knew? Yeah, who knew? Who knew? We were marching band kids. Yes. We were in marching band for two years, and then I finally gave her a chance in our third year, and here we are today. I'm like, those two years, I was not interested in you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But here we are today. Here we are today. <laughs> now you're my best friend, my wife. My podcast partner Uh and my favorite person in the universe. I say it all the time. You're my favorite person in the universe. Oh, honey. And even though we don't celebrate Valentine's Day. We don't. I did something for you. What'd you do? (laughs) What'd you do? (laughs) What are you doing? Oh, my gosh. What is that? What is that? I put my favorite. I put my favorite person in the universe on a t-shirt. Oh like, my goodness! What is that? Are you, where are you gonna wear that shirt? Everywhere. No, you're not. Everywhere. <laughs> no, Business you're not. meetings. Everywhere. <laughs> oh my yeah. goodness, honey, you're crazy. What That's are you this is why we couldn't record the Valentine's episode two weeks ago. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> this is what I was waiting for from DHL. For that shirt? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's an original. You're nuts. You know what's so bad? <laughs> what? I ordered 2XL because it, uni- it was unisex. Uh-huh. Yo, I don't know. Like, this is like a medium. Like, I... Like if you, I wasn't you ordered, in the gym, you said DHL, so that means it came from like China. I didn't know it was. A, I didn't know it was a Chinese website. They had a bunch of white people <laughs> on the website. I didn't know it was a Chinese website. So you really got probably a large. A medium. This ain't no large. <laughs> this not a large. Maybe a medium then. If I exhale, this whole shit looks. <laughs> Why would you get that shirt? What are you thinking? I was. <laughs> I was thinking I'm putting my favorite for now what? she's with me all the time. Oh my god. Yeah, look at that face. <laughs> You're so silly. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and if you guys want to know where this photo comes from, uh the reason she's smiling is I had a picture of her eating ice cream. And there's ice cream right in front. <laughs> there's ice cream right in front. And so I just cropped her head, zoomed in, cropped her head up. So she's not smiling at me like this. She's smiling at the ice cream. That's oh, that's probably that's the, that's that's real that's happiness. A, that's, that's real. This is real happiness <laughs> in this photo. <laughs> You're nuts. I love you. I love you. Too. You're my favorite person. Yeah. I love 
you. That's it. <laughs> oh, my. And for our last story. Okay. Today, I effed up by showing my girlfriend a picture of the engagement ring I bought her. So today, while my girlfriend, 38 female and I, 39 male, were texting back and forth, I thought it would be a great idea to send her a picture of what is supposed to be her engagement ring to see what she would think of it like from her website. Now, we have had the conversation, she and I have said, neither one of us is going anywhere, and we have been ring shopping for a while, so I'm not ruining the surprise, so to speak. When she saw it, she said, hmm, I don't know about the halo. It just looks bumpy, like it will get snagged. Oh. This is nearly identical to the one she fell in love with in a store. <laughs> I'm absolutely gutted. I had it custom made for her. I can't return it. I'm not sure what to do now. Either try to sell it and get her one that doesn't have a bumpy halo or propose with it anyway. I'm leaning towards giving it to her anyway and offering to have the halo changed out if she wants. Oh, well, I thought someone may find some humor in this one. Poor guy. It's not a poor guy. Sir. Poor guy. Sir. It doesn't matter. It does matter. But what he needs to do is stand on that he made the right choice because that's the one that he felt that she would like and run with it. Stop. You've never proposed to anyone in your life. You've never gone engagement ring shopping in your life. No. Who's the expert? I don't know. Me. I've done it. So listen. Oh, wow. Listen, woman. Oh, wow. A man's talking. (laughs) What is that supposed to mean? It means when I want your opinion, (laughs) I'll give it to you. Not mine. (laughs) When I bought an engagement ring, I'm in the store, and they're trying to, you know, they're running all these games and stuff. I went to a jeweler. I ain't going to one of these chain stores. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You You see the drip. You see the drip. I ain't going to know. No chain store. I went to the jeweler and they're trying to show me all this stuff, but I, I'd done my research the night before. So I, I kind of knew what I was in the market for. Just the night before? Yeah. I wasn't thinking about that shit. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about that shit at all. Okay. Yeah, I'll be, be very honest with you. It might've been the morning of, I don't, I don't know if it was the night before. Hmm. I digress. And so whatever, you know, I see it. I know what I'm going for. We're in Miami. In Miami, all these all these young ladies have these stupid looking rings, the kind of shit you just chop somebody's finger off and go buy a house with. That's what but they're not worth that much. No, they're like little chips of stuff. Yeah. yeah. They're not real diamonds. They make it look like it's not yeah. really they faking. Yeah, yeah. So I knew I didn't want that, you know, fake shit. So I was looking for something subtle, classic. Classic was what I was going for. Because I know who I'm shopping for. Because I know my wife. And you know, I find a thing. I'm like, oh, that's the one right there. Do you want it? No, no, no. That one right there. Are you sure you don't? That one right there. Are you sure? Don't make me tell you one more time. <laughs> There's about five other jewelers in this place. I, let's stop it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I literally started walking out. That's when they started. They I started know, talking, you told right? Me. You they started talking. Man, that whole conversation. When I said, okay, I'll probably come back. The whole conversation changed. Anyway, the jeweler's doing it, you know, shining out, trying to say, oh, we'll get this. Nah, nah. Yeah, yeah, all right, whatever. And then this lady that works there comes up. So do you think she'll say yes? Man. I am not lying. Damn near word for a word. I said, if she wasn't going to say yes, I wouldn't be in here. Like, the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> like, what? Like, what? Uh, uh. But you know. You know, there, there are people that propose and they get told no. Well, that's because they propose. You didn't propose. I'm going to just jump over that. I was in school <laughs> with a guy. We know he doesn't watch this, so we could talk that shit. I was in school with a guy, and he told everyone he's proposing to his girlfriend this weekend. And, you know, people getting excited. I was like, we shall see. He got everyone excited. He was about to ring. Da, da, da. He came back next week. He didn't want to talk about shit. Oh, that's terrible. He didn't want to talk about it. He ain't talk about it for like two weeks. And finally, he was like, yeah, we broke up. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, he shouldn't have, he shouldn't bought the ring. So I guess everyone doesn't know. But uh Yeah. You know, when you're in tune, when you got it, when you got it like that, you know what I'm saying? Y'all see this, y'all see the y'all see this custom made trip. You know, <laughs> you you know what it is. Shirt. I'm gonna wear it. I mean, I probably have to lose like a hundred pounds <laughs> to wear this shirt. This shit is so damn tight. <laughs> this shit is a shirt. 
<laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If I cough, if I cough, this shit might implode. <laughs> this shit is crazy. But yeah, sir, to you, she loves you. You love her. You can fix the ring later on. Just propose. That's what counts, that you guys are combining the union of your love at the right time for y'all. So just do it. And maybe you could start an amazing podcast with her and put her face on a shirt. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to dilly dally anymore. OK, that's about it for this episode. Anything you want to throw in there? No. How would you rate our first and probably only Valentine episode? I thought it was good. It was fun. I say only because it's just coincident that Valentine's on, it's on Wednesday and we release on Wednesdays every Wednesday, 9 a.m. On YouTube and Spotify. We want to be on other platforms, but I have not been able to make an Apple ID for like two months. So, oh, wow. yeah, hating. Well, enjoy Valentine's Day for those who celebrate. And Valentine's Day if you're single and lonely. Oh, okay. I was going to say something. I mean, that's not for single and lonely, honey. What's it for? That's for like the friends. Who don't have a man. But, it was, but it's friends, so they're not lonely. They just don't have romantic interest. Okay. With that bullshit. They want romantic interest. They can't get romantic interest. They may not want romantic and you know what? interest. I, I don't know why it's called gallant. I don't know why it's called Galentine's Day. Like it's not a bunch of lonely ass dudes like like sitting around. I guess Galentine just goes with the valve. It's a, it's a lot of people that celebrate Galentine's Day. Why? I told you what I heard that day was. A side chick day. No, that's the day before. That's the Valentine's Day is the day before. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. So, yeah. But we didn't want to spice the episode, so we're not going to talk so about I that. tried. Side chick You day. see that last, the last one? The last one's like, he's really, you know, he proposed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. my 1% good story. I would also offer not to propose on Valentine's Day. It's kind of cheesy. Yeah. I would say just don't propose. Just give it a ring and, you know. Yeah, that's. That, let it do yeah, what it that's do. what you did, so. We'll get into that another day. Yeah. At only black kids on all social media, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, holler at us. Let us know what you're doing. We we put some different things that aren't in the episode on socials. We try to switch it up. And we'll be doing our first movie reaction sometime next month. You excited about that one? Yes. I love movies. I love movies too. I know you do. But you know the only thing I love more than movies? What? You. Ew. All right, let's just get out that chair. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>